Hi guys, welcome to another video. Hope you're all keeping well. Now, this is going to be a, a tag video uh, of a um, hundred years of horror, which is which was started by Horror and Todge, uh, Tony. Uh, so, uh, if you're not, if you're not familiar with uh, Tony's channel, uh, go along and, and su subscribe. Give me support. He's a great guy. He loves his horror movies. I'll leave the link down below. Um, so, uh, yeah. So he started this tag uh, for uh, you, uh, you know, uh, YouTubers to uh, pick their favourite horror movies from each decade. Uh, so a couple of other people have started. So I thought I'd, I'd sort of like uh, do mine as well. Okay. Without further ado, uh, we'll get straight into it. Now, uh, unfortunately for the 1920s, I haven't got the movie in the collection, but um, I'm not really a big fan of his silent movies, to be to be honest with you. But if it was to pick one, I'd say Nosferatu, that starred Matt, Max Schreck, which was the kind of like uh, prelude to the uh, Universal uh, Dracula movies and that. You know, you know the if you've seen the movie, you know what I mean. The bald head and the um, the pointed ears and that. So I'd pick uh, Nosferatu from the 1920s. Okay, so moving on now, guys, to the 1930s, and without hesitation, I had to pick this one. This was the movie that got me into horror, starring the late great Boris Karloff, and that is Frankenstein from 1931. Uh, what superlatives, more superlatives can I say about this I haven't said already? Fantastic performance by Karloff as the, as the Frankenstein monster. Equally fantastic performance by Colin Clive as Henry Frankenstein. Uh, it's the ultimate horror movie, the best portrayal of the Frankenstein monster that's ever ever been done. Uh, so many iconic scenes in this, uh, the burning windmill at the end, the laboratory where, where he, he brings the monster back to life, and the immortal lines, it's alive, alive, it's alive, also by Colin Clive, seen many, many times over the years in, in different sorts of like movies and plays and so forth and that. So that's me, that's me choice, guys, for the year uh, 1930s, Frankenstein 31, starring uh, the late great Boris Carl, a fantastic movie. Movie. Moving on now to the 1940s. Now this was quite difficult as it was for the 30s because I could have picked the, the, the Bride of Frankenstein and Son of Frankenstein as well. But I was agonising between these two guys. I wanted to, but so I thought I'd, I'd, I'd cheat a little bit and include two of them. So from 1941, it's The Wolfman, starring the late great Lon Chaney Jr. And then its sequel, 1943, Frankenstein meets The Wolfman. This was the very, this was the real first Universal monster bash where the monsters met each other. But it's more of a Wolfman movie than a Frankenstein movie. Then of course you've got the great one from 1941, uh, the Wolfman, uh, Lon Chaney plays the uh, the tortured Lawrence Talbot who returns to his his family estate in Wales, only to be bitten by a werewolf by by you know as he's protecting a, a woman in the fox shrouded foot, and of course the case is passed on to him. I won't say too much about these movies, guys, because I spoke about them a lot in previous videos, but they're absolute classics. And it was great to see Talbot come back again in a couple more sequels, House of Frankenstein, House of Dracula, and then the Abbott and Costello. But yeah, fantastic, yeah. These two movies, guys, are the, are the movies of the 1940s for me. So that's Wolfman, Frank, uh, the, Wolf, the Wolfman, and Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Fantastic. Moving on now to the year uh, 50s, and again, so many great movies, guys, especially Hammer, but I've opted for Dracula, starring the late, great Christopher Lee. Christopher Lee, I've said this before, the greatest Count Dracula ever. Nobody but nobody can play him. Uh, you know, Nobody can play Dracula as good as Christopher Lee. I had this awesome screen presence. So many great scenes in this, guys. Hammer really on the money in the debut in the, in the horror movie industry, along with The Curse of Frankenstein. That's a big favourite of mine. But this is a fantastic movie. The best Dracula movie I've ever seen. It, it was released in America under under the title The Horror of Dracula. But nobody play Chris, nobody can play Dracula like Christopher Lee. Just look at that cover, guys. Yeah, and there he is again at the back. My all-time favourite Dracula. So that's me pick, guys. It was very difficult, as I say, from the 1950s. That's Dracula from 1958. Moving on now to the 60s, and again, I was torn between a couple of movies here, guys, but I've opted for two classics. Well, the early 60s, um, Psycho, um, Alfred Hitchcock's classic, and then later on, 1968, Rosemary's Baby. Two great movies. Uh, I've watched these so many times over the years. I never get fed up at watching them. Uh, Psycho, of course. I don't need to say too much about that. Uh, you know, the uh, schizophrenic Norman Bates, uh, you know, he imagines he's his mother and he kills like guests at his, uh, guests at his, at his motel, the Bates Motel. And of course, you mustn't forget the shopping scene of Janet Lee getting killed off about halfway through the movie. Great, great performance by Anthony Perkins. Yeah, he was born to, he was born to play this role. Yeah, real sinister character and that. Um, so, so there you go, that's Psycho. Um, as I said, I think that was from um, so 1960. 
yeah, 1960, 1960 Psycho, and then Rosemary's Baby, Roman Polanski, another great movie, uh, my all-time favourite slow burn, a horror movie, guys, yeah, yeah, uh, but it builds up to a terrifying climax, he has his father's eyes, well, you know what I mean, don't you, yeah, yeah, Rosemary, Mia Farrow's really on the money, playing uh, Rosemary, um, uh, Rosemary, uh, and then John Cassavetes uh, plays their husbands, you know, a slimy husband guy, all, all full of uh, black magic overtones and that, uh, creepy building, uh, oh, generally, uh, generally unsettling film all round, guys, you know, this is my favourite devil movie, Rosemary's Baby, so there you go, absolute classic, I love the, mo I love the book as well by Iron Eleven, so Rosemary's Baby from 1968. Now, moving on to the 70s, now, this was really difficult because the seventies was the was the was the decade that I really really watched a lot of, a lot of horror movies and that and especially Hammer and Amicus. So after much after careful consideration, I narrowed it down to the ones that I've watched most. There's so many great movies in the seventies: Halloween, you know, The Omen, uh, you know, I just reel them off. But I've, I've narrowed it down to two that I've watched mostly. So that's the first one is from 1974, and that is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Wow, what a movie this is, guys. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend that you get yourself a copy or rent it. This is the ultimate horror movie. Uh, Leatherface, you know, the Sawyer family. Uh, oh, yeah, it's a real creepy movie. Grand, you, you know, uh, Grandpa, you know, the hammer scene and that, the notorious hammer scene and that. Well, if you've seen the movie, you know what I mean. Absolute classic shock cinema audiences when it was first uh, released. Uh, yeah, and uh, I wasn't too keen on the subsequent sequels, to be honest, but this is the one, guys. This is the main one from the, the Texas Chainsaw franchise. That's the classic from 1974. And also, I picked an Amicus movie that I've watched countless times. It's a, it's a horror anthology, and that is The House of Drip Blood. What a cast, guys. You've got Christopher Lee, you've got Ingrid Pitt, you've got Peter Cushing, you've got John Pertwee. All the stories in this are good. I especially love the one with Christopher Lee and Sweets of the Sweets where he has a daughter, and the mother was a witch and that, and she's, she's into voodoo, yeah, but having said that, they're all great stories, guys, yeah, um, the framing stories about this house, uh, and she, under, under the AJ Stoker Company, um, they've, they've taken charge of the, of the house and that, and everybody who, re who rents the house meets a horrible death, yeah, great framing story, uh, Grace, uh, John Bennis is really on the money as the detective investigating the disappearance of this uh, horror actor, Played by John Pertwee, that's the, that's the famous Vampire Cloak, a Vampire Cloak uh, story. But yeah, fantastic movie, The House of Drip Blood. Um, this is a great great edition as well. Yeah, so that's the, there you go, that's The House of Drip Blood from 1971. Moving on now to the 80s, and again, this was very difficult for me. Uh, I love so many films from the 1980s, I like The First Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, you know, movies like that. But in the end, I, I picked one again that I go back to again and again and again. It's a kind of a comedy horror movie, and it has a lycanthro it's got lycanthropy as its theme, and that is the fantastic, truly fantastic American Werewolf in London, directed by the great John Landis. Oh, guys, what superlative is this going to say about this about this movie? It's got the lot. It's got the good. It's got a good balance of horror and comedy, like the Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein movie from 1948. Awesome transformation scenes, uh, very well done. Uh, I love the uh, the woodland setting and that, you know, where the two uh, main uh, male protagonists go to the go to the pub and that, and all the locals are hostile to them. So many great scenes in this, and the werewolf was fantastic. It doesn't, it's not on, on it, it, it's on all fours. Uh, well, as, as you most probably know if you've seen the movie, it walks around on all fours, unlike the Wolfman. But nevertheless, guys, this is a truly awesome werewolf. It's a terrifying werewolf. Um, I rate this alongside The Howling uh, as one of the greatest modern werewolf movies I've ever seen and great performances by these guys. I love the part where his mate keeps coming back from the dead and each time he comes back he's rotted away a bit further. He has a horrible death, his mate, he really does. You know, he really has a horrible death when they're coming out the, out the uh, pub and he gets torn to pieces. The werewolf, oh, it's one of the most gruesome, terrifying scenes I have ever seen in a horror movie. Fantastic. So there you go, from 1981, that is American Werewolf in London. Moving on now, guys, to uh, the 90s, and um, okay, quite difficult for me, but in the end, again, I picked the movie that I go to again and again, and that is Stephen King's Misery. Oh, again, I could sit here all afternoon uttering superlatives about this truly gripping, fantastic horror movie. It stars uh, Kathy Bates, you know, as Annie Wilkes. Uh, James Caan gives a great performance as Paul Sheldon, the writer, who she takes into a care. But she is one crazy woman, and that is no word of a lie, guys. And I need to mention the notorious um, the, ham the, the hobbling scene with the, ham the, the sledgehammer. 
if you haven't seen Misery, you've got to you've got to you've got to go and see it or get yourself a copy. It's got everything. Good rewatchability factor. I love the snowy setting. One of the best Stephen King, one of the best stories that Stephen King has ever written. Fantastic movie, Misery, yeah. So um, I'd highly recommend this one. So there you go from 1990. That is Misery. And now we're going through to the um, 2000s now, guys. Um, I've got a couple here which I've picked out. Uh, doubtless some of you, some of you, some of you might have seen them already. Um, so I've, I've, I've cheated the game a little bit here. Because I've picked, I've picked three. So I've picked Drag Me to Hell. Fantastic movie. Uh, where this creepy old woman puts the curse on this uh, this girl. Who she won't give her, um, an, I think it's an extension on her. On her, on her yeah. She won't give her an extension on her loan. Yeah. Uh, she's a loan officer. And uh, of course she gets gets a curse put on her by this, oh, this hideous, hideous, uh, hideous uh, gypsy, gypsy woman. Yeah. And uh, oh, she's a real monster, guys. Yeah. So that's Drag Me to Hell. And then... Another one I've picked, I think it's from 2005, um, The Ring. This is another great movie, great supernatural movie starring uh, Naomi Watts uh, about this videotape. And um, it's so many, you, you die in so many days. It begins as just another urban legend. The whispered tale of a nightmarish videotape that causes anyone who watches it to die seven days later. And you've got Naomi Watts as the reporter. She's fantastic in this. She's in the ring too as well. Yeah, very, very creepy movie. Uh, it's a remake from the Japanese horror movie Ringo. Yeah, so there you go. That's the ring. And then my final pick for this decade is a fantastic uh, movie made in Australia uh, starring John Jarris. And he's a real psycho in this. And that is Wolf Creek. This is based on an actual true case, guys. The backpacker murders. Uh, yeah, he's a real psychopath, this character. Uh, and he, he doesn't pull any punches in that when he encounters his victims and that. Uh, he starts off uh, very, you know, quite kindly at first and that, helping them with the, the, the breakdown of this back in the vast Australian outback. And he, he, he pulls up in his truck and that. And he, he seems to be okay at first. But then as the movie goes on, you see he's got like a kind of a dark side to him. And boy, guys, is he vicious. Yeah. If you haven't seen Wolf Creek, I highly recommend that you get yourself a copy. So there you go. That is Wolf Creek. Again, I picked a couple of movies here, guys. Um, the first one is about, um, I think this is even creepy clown and Pennywise. Terry Fire, Arthur Clown, who we first saw in the uh, anthology, anthology uh, movie. Um, Halloween, All Hallows Eve, yeah, oh yeah, and there's one particular scene in this, guys, that is really gruesome, uh, it's one of the most, uh, oh, stomach-churning uh, kills I've ever seen in a horror movie, and this character, Art the Clown, is fast becoming a, a horror icon, uh, yeah, and if you haven't seen this movie, guys, I highly recommend it, Terry Fire, he was actually featured in, an, in another movie, Prize of All Hallows Eve, I think it was a short and that, but his official debut was in the All Hallows Eve, but I'm very pleased to hear they're making a sequel to this, guys, yeah, so uh, Terry Fire, it's a fantastic movie, yeah, uh, good cast, yeah, great atmosphere, uh, so I highly recommend this one if you haven't seen it, yeah, from 2018. Another one from that decade is a, a creepy doll movie uh, called uh, Robert's. Now, um, I've got all the Robert movies now, and this is basically, it's very very much similar to um, Annabelle, but I think this is even better, guys, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, a uh, family, usual thing, family bias, this creepy doll and taunts and, and all weird things happen. It's a fantastic movie. I know this is a kind of a Marmite movie. I know a lot of people, some people like it and some people hate it, but I love the guys, and that's why I got the sequels. If you like creepy doll movies, you could do no worse than get yourself a copy of Robert. I think it's a fantastic movie, British movie. Okay, guys, well, obviously, uh, the last choice was quite difficult because we've only just come into the new decade. So, um, I'll pick this one anyway. Uh, it's, a, it's a horror anthology movie. Um, I've watched quite a few good ones like in this decade, but I had to pick this one because I thought it was fantastic. And that is The Mortuary Collection. Now, it's a kind of a horror movie, horror anthology movie with different stories. And it's got the framing story, you know, about this misguided young girl who takes refuge in a decrepit old mortuary. There she meets Montgomery Dark, an eccentric undertaker with more than a few skeletons in his closet. Montgomery chronicles the strange history of the town through a series of twisted tales. Yeah, so there you go. So I'd highly recommend, if you like a good modern, modern horror anthology movie, I highly recommend that you get yourself a copy of this one, Mortuary Tales. Yeah. 
And that's it. Okay, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed me 100 years of horror. Um, I would have liked to include a couple of more or more movies, but obviously you can't you can't um, you can't put them all in. You know, of course, you know, like Halloween, Friday the 13th. But I wanted to show the ones what I've watched mostly. You know, I've gone back and we watched again and again and again. And I think there's some fantastic selections there, guys. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not going to tag anybody, but I'd like to see uh, what your you know I'd like to see some of you guys if you, if you haven't done it already. Your hundred years of horror, picking your favourite. It doesn't have to just be one. I, I picked a couple myself. Pick a couple of movies and talk about them from each decade and that. Let me know what you think of them, yeah? Did you like any of them what I've picked? I'd love to hear your comments. I know the Texas Chainsaw Massacre has got a big fan following, as has Dracula, Christopher Lee, yeah? But I enjoyed doing this video. So as I say, I'm not going to tag anybody, but I would like to, if you know, if you want to do a tag in that. And again, um, thanks, Tony, for doing that uh, tag in that. You know, it was very good tagging that. And as I say, I'll leave the link down below. Um, to Tony's channel, um, you know, if you want to, if you want to go along and subscribe and that, uh, and uh, yeah, so so I say I really enjoyed doing this video and I enjoyed the other people's video. I know quite a couple of other people have done have done videos as well and that, so I'd like to see more and that, you know, yeah, very interesting, yeah. Okay, guys, that's it. Uh, yeah, take care and I will talk to you all again soon. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, guys, you might like to check out my website as www.alantona.com. Um, you'll be able to find out a little bit more about my work as a writer.